it, you can, if you if you shake this bottle, you can hold it. Or if you put the torch behind it, sometimes you can actually keep it. There's no point checking it now. Yeah, you, you take it out, wipe it. Do it while the engine is off. It's like a very, very thin smear of oil around this ring, so that way the cap doesn't actually get stuck. But you can see inside you've got... Hi, welcome back to Sound of Mountains, our channel. Today we've got a 2017 Ford Transit Custom. And I just want to show you how to check the levels and how to open the bonnet. Just simple things that, yeah, that everybody wants to know. Open the bonnet with a key. Put it in. You know, once that way, when it pops, then go once the other way. And while you're holding it, you lift the bonnet up. Take the key out, leave the key in, you go like that and you knock the key and you can snap it inside. I've done that before, so not on this particular vehicle, but yeah, so it can be done. Right, well we've got here, that's your screen wash. You fill it up to the brim, so you don't have to, no dipsticks or anything like that, literally fill up to the brim. You've got a brake fluid, you shouldn't really need to be topping up, but you look at the level, level looks quite high, but the colour of it doesn't look very, very good. It looks like it might need a brake fluid change. But normally you can, if you, if you shake this bottle, you can hold it. Or if you put the torch behind it, sometimes you can actually physically see the brake fluid level. There's a maximum level, minimum. But generally, if your brake fluid is low, that doesn't mean that you have to top it up. Normally, it means that your brake pad is worn out. So that's why the brake fluid level has gone down. Next, you've got a power steering fluid. Again, you've got the minimum, maximum. Again, you can shake it and you can normally see it. But if it's too dirty, you can open, physically open and you see the level. You can see the level up to there, which is on the maximum. It smells good because you can tell by the smell when the fluid is all black and silvery. You've got a proper issue with the power steering pump or power steering fluid, or rack rather, and you can smell burnt in there sometimes. Then it might need a require attention then. But this one smells nice. Also, you've got a oil filler cap. It's very skinny and narrow, so you, you can't really top up too quickly. Yeah. Well, on this vehicle, so generally, you really need to go what manufacturer specifications are. But generally on the, on the Fords, it's a, it could be 030 Ford oil or it could be 530 Ford oil. Depends what engine you've got there, really, what year. But generally it's a 030, 0W30. Ford recommend Castrol, but you know, that's just what they want. They want the money, but you don't particularly have to use a Castrol wherever, just wherever basically but one thing don't mix and match different oils obviously you've got the dipstick there luckily there's no point checking it now yeah you, you take it out wipe it do it while the engine is off and then uh, maybe stood there uh, for a minute you wipe it then you put it in and then you can check the level and you can see your minimum mark, there's maximum mark. You've got little dots in between. Uh, so the level is pretty good. So we don't need to top up anything. With the oil, you do need to top up. But if you see your oil level was okay, all of a sudden it comes up to here, it means that you've got some diesel dilution going on. So we'll have to replace the oil quite urgently. 
doesn't just appear randomly. It's generally it's, uh, the level rises when the diesel gets past the piston rings and go into the into the oil. Dilutes the oil, so it's not very healthy for your engine to have that. Up here we've got a little. Uh, if you've got a flat battery, that's your jump jumping point where you put the positive terminal. And that negative terminal you normally put somewhere on the body. Well you can even use one of them one of them bolts, you know, just, just nice and some metallic where you can put jump point on. Yeah. Some vehicles have a special jump point. This one I can't see really. Right. You also got up here full expansion tank, that's where your antifreeze goes. And you can see it's see-through. Again, you shake the bottle and you can see the level well below minimum. Well below minimum, so that definitely needs to be topping, topping up. But while the engine is hot, do not open it, otherwise you'll burn yourself. And, but, and if you do open it, open it gently until it gives a bit of a hiss. But you've got a little pipe coming out from the behind. So if it, if it does have a pressure, the whole hot water and steam will shoot that way rather than towards your face. Sometimes they get very tight. This one's all right. The caps looks all right. We've got the two rubber seals, one here, one there. Just have a look at their condition. Sometimes it's we can put like a very very thin smear of oil around this ring, so that way the cap doesn't actually get stuck. But you can see inside you've got pink color antifreeze. Don't put blue one in it or green one or any other colors. Stick to the correct color because you can create problems. And then uh, top it up to the maximum, up to here, and then it will be all good. But generally, if you have to top up your coolant regularly, that means that you have some sort of a leak somewhere. Antifreeze coolant doesn't just disappear either randomly, it doesn't just evaporate. Yeah, it's uh, obviously got some leak somewhere. Normally, it's probably from the radiator where you get is exposed to all the elements so it could be a stone chip, it could be a salt from the road, whatever, you know, a bug, a bird could have gone through the grill and pierced a hole in the radiator and you get a tiny little pinprick, you know, and could cause the loss of cooling. So it only happens when the radiator is actually active, which is when the engine is warmed up properly and thermostat opened up. So sometimes when you cold vehicle, the radiator isn't actually working and you start up and you can't see the leaves. Not until the system is all pressurized and, and, uh, and hot, that's when you can actually physically be able to see the cold in the radiator or, or the leakage. But sometimes it's not so easy to find the leaks. But that's about it. And then, um, you can check your tires and brakes, but otherwise, um, under the body checks, that's all they are. There's not much else to, to do on it. Well, thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye for now.